um, in the history of North America. And so you might say that it was a really big turning point or just an economic turning point or only a small turning point. Or it was a turning point, but it was more significant um, for the Europeans and the North America, whatever it is. So that qualification means that you're sort of showing, yes, this is my answer. What I'm not trying to say is the be-all, end-all. I'm trying to show that, there, that this is well, I'm qualified. Um, how much is my answer, or do I think my answer is right? Um, and in this class, I'm going to teach you a formula that I'm going to require you to use for the first two exams that we write. I think all of you should use it the whole class here, the very least most of you. Uh, but I will require you, like, I'll take off points if you don't use the, the formula for the first two essays you write, the first two tests. After that, if you think you're ready to move on, then you can do that. But in my experience, it's usually somewhere between 10 and 20% of my students by the end of the year are able to move on without the formula. The other 80 so or percent of students um, need the formula to make sure they continue to use all the pieces, have all the pieces in. So, like, there's nothing magic about this formula. It's sort of the result of my, whatever, nine years of teaching a push and trying to find, like, what's the easiest way to get students to do the things they need to do. Uh, but like I said, I'll require to use it for two tests. So um, it starts with although. So we're going to get rid of our complexity right off the bat. Um, there are other words you could use besides although, but this is a formula. So we're going to use the word although. So you're going to say although, blah, 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 this other piece of information, this contradictory piece of information, uh, then you're going to get right to your answer to the question. Here's your argument. State my argument. And then we're going to end with the word because and an explanation. And here's what we're going to tell why we think that. So whatever you thought was the number one most important uh, effect of European exploration, why did you think that? Now, there's two reasons we have this last piece, because. Because some of you might be thinking, well, that wasn't on the list of what was required in order to break the chart you did. Like, why are we doing that? Um, there's two reasons. The first reason is that it will help you make sure you have a claim. Because if you get as far as the because and you get stuck, like, oh, I don't know, I don't know how to answer it, finish the sentence with because. Like if we said, there were many important defects of European exploration on the New World. Because, uh, because there were, right? You can't finish that sentence. It doesn't make sense to say because after that. And that's a good clue for you. Ooh, I didn't really make a claim. I need to uh, I need to go back and fix so I have because. That's the first reason we use because. The second reason um, is because although it's not part of the points to get your thesis points, um, there's another point that you're going to get in your essay, or two points in the TDQ, for analysis. And analysis is all about explaining why your argument is true. So if you set up your argument right here in the beginning, if you have that because, that explanation right in your thesis, now you're already prepared to use that analysis throughout your essay. And it's going to help you to make sure that you get that analysis point as well. So that's why we include the word because. So this is just sort of a big framework. Now we're going to look at some examples. The first one I'm going to show you is terrible. Don't be this person. So we're going to use a prompt about the Civil War because I think most of you have like a limited network knowledge of sort of kind of how the Civil War started. So my prompt is, what was the primary cause of Southern secession in 1860 and 1861? And so Mr. I'm not doing so hot in a push wrote this. Uh, although some people disagree, there were many reasons for Southern secession before the Civil War. And that might look like a thesis to you, and it actually might work as a thesis in some of your other classes, right? So uh, for a different style of essay, this might start uh, as kind of like the focus of your uh, of your introduction, and you're going to go on and explain it elsewhere, but this isn't going to fly in English. First of all, they didn't make an argument, and they didn't answer the question. There's no claim here. There were many reasons for the Civil War. You're right, there were, but you didn't tell me any of them. And the question asked you to tell me what you thought was the most important. The second problem is their complexity, <coughs> excuse me, doesn't give me any additional pieces of information. It's grammatically correct, right? They started with the word although, and sometimes students think as long as they start with although, they're definitely to get that complexity. But it's not the case, because this person didn't offer me a contradiction or a qualification. This person just said, maybe somewhere out there in the universe there's a contradiction, but they didn't tell me what it was, so that's not going to count. And of course they have no because, which is because they didn't make a claim, so there's nothing to explain. Uh, so this one's pretty bad. Let's look at a good one. Sorry? Yes, and by they you mean me who's typing real fast early at night. Thanks for that. Okay, there's another spelling mistake here. Uh, like, let's just try to look past that. Uh, so here's a better thesis for the same prompt. 
Although some secession documents claimed to be defending states' rights, the primary cause of Southern secession before the Civil War was a desire to protect the institution of slavery because the Southern economy was dependent upon the labor of slaves. So I've made my claim in the middle, right? What is the primary cause of secession? The desire to protect slavery. I have explained why I think the desire to protect slavery was the number one cause and not the number two or number three or number four cause. The desire to protect slavery was most important to Southerners because their economy depended on it. And I've accounted for additional historical information. Some documents say it's all about slave states' rights. But I'm going to argue in my essay why states' rights was the cover and slavery was the real reason. So this thesis hits at all of those points and sets me up for a strong essay where I'm going to try to prove a point. Right? I am being persuasive here. Now we're going to switch gears. I see some of you writing, and you you can copy these slides. They are posted for you in Schoology if you want to access this presentation and this video um, or the audio. I guess with the slides will also be available to you through YouTube. Um, but let's go back to the prompt that we started with, and I want you to take out those whiteboards and see if you can transform either on your whiteboard or in your notes. Take whatever you wrote for your warm-up and make it a thesis. Um, let's go ahead and look at um, my example, and then uh, we're going to look at some of your examples and talk about how to fix them um, and how, like, what are the strengths. So this one's not perfect. I came up with it just really quickly. I'm pretty fast at writing thesis statements because I've done this for nine consecutive years. Um, but you probably are not going to be this fast, and that's okay. I don't want you to think like that. That means you're not good at this. Um, this is a skill that is hard to learn, like we're spending a whole day on one sentence for a reason. Um, so I started with, uh, although European exploration resulted in a devastation of Native American societies, the most significant effect of exploration was the exchange of crops between the Old and New World, because this exchange transformed the economies of both Europe and North America. So uh, what's my claim? Who can identify the claim? Okay, that the exchange of crops was the most significant effect. Can somebody disagree with me? They can. In fact, I've given an example of someone who might disagree. Someone might say that what was more important? Yeah, so they're like, you know, uh, mass death due to disease and conquest. So um, I've got my complexity, I've got my claim. So then look at my explanation. Uh, because this exchange transformed the economies of both Europe and North America. This talking about uh, like a transformation of the economy, um, does that help to support why I think that the crop exchange was the most important? It would. There are other viewpoints, but that one would work. Now, let me tell you about my process. So when I started this, I had started with the word although, and then I like, like hit enter, come on, type it. You guys are writing. So when I write this on paper, um, I start with the word although, and then I just skip a line. And then I go on and write my claim. Because I find it easier to write my claim and explanation and then go back and think about like what an appropriate piece of complexity would be for that. So uh, that might be a process that works for you. Another thing is that as I was working, um, I had to change. I started off with, with the exchange um, of like crops animals and uh, and goods, I think is how I started it out. But I uh, sort of eliminated all that because one of the problems uh, when we have lists in a thesis is that we set ourselves up to really make like three separate arguments instead of one central argument. So one of the things we do not do in an A-push thesis that you might see in other classes is what I like to call the signpost thesis. That's the where you say, um, the primary causes were this, this, and this, right? And that's like paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three. Not your head if you know what I'm talking about. You do. We don't do that in English. Um, not because it's inherently like evil or bad or you could never possibly write a good essay that way. It's just that when we do it like that, we really tend to write three mini essays, right? A little one paragraph persuasion and then another paragraph persuading a separate idea and then a third paragraph and so on. And that's not the point. College board essays for the, college, for the APOS history exam need to make one single point. So I decided to move it down to just scale it back to just the word crops because I thought I could make a pretty solid argument about crops. I think I can write two full paragraphs about crops, right? Like, I could write about the population changes because of crops and about like the um, economic systems like the rise of industrialization and like the rise of cash crop agriculture in the new world and I thought I could make two solid paragraphs about that. 
speaking of, most A push essays are two body paragraphs long. Um, sometimes there's three, like if the college board asks you to do like um, economic, political, and social stuff, that tends to lend itself to three paragraphs, but that's not the norm. Most A push essays are have two body paragraphs, an introduction, um, and sometimes a conclusion if you have time. That's like a great thing. Um, anyway, uh, so it wasn't perfect. Um, I worked through this with um, uh, Mr. Kratz's students in the second period, and someone suggested, well, what about the word commodities? And I was like, yeah, that's a great word. Because now we still get to make one argument, right? It's about the exchange of commodities, not diseases. Diseases, I'm saying, is not as important. But it's the exchange of commodities. And now I've given myself even more room. So if you don't think you can make two full body paragraphs about just crops, then now you can use the word commodities and you can talk about crops and animals, or crops and gold, or whatever you've got. So um, this is a process, right? And sometimes it takes sort of previewing what you're doing, um, uh, and sort of write it down as sort of like a preliminary, and then going back and going, OK, but do I have enough for that? Or, OK, this is too broad. I need to narrow it down to one argument, or whatever it is. Uh, OK, so what I need now is um, some samples. Um, and I don't mean to say this the wrong way, and I know that it can feel uncomfortable for me to ask you to do this, but what I, I'm really kind of hoping, I'm just pulling from the stack here, but I'm kind of hoping I'm going to get some that are not very good. Because we can learn a lot from how to take an idea that is not that good, and figuring out, okay, if this is our first try, then what do we do in the writing process? Like when you have that times test, and you sit down, and the first words that come out of your pencil are not a very strong thesis, what is the thought process that needs to go on to figure out how to fix it? So that's what I mean is that most of the time, our first shot, this is my fourth time to write this today, right? Like that came really fast for me because I've already done it three times. But what happens when we're on, when we're on our first try? So uh, let me hear from Kiana. Can you just read me exactly what you have even if you're not finished? And I know this is ironic coming from me, but uh, slowly ish okay? Although many believe that the most significant effect of, his, of England's exploration of oak species is the great death of the planet population, okay. I support the fact of benefits that each side of the world receives throughout the process. Okay, period. We have a big cut. I don't have a Okay, you right. The development of each population changed greatly due to the trade such as the Columbia Exchange. Thus, both aided each other to evolve as a new Okay, thank you. I left out some things, not because they were bad, just because it shortened my ability to type. I'm not sure what my fifth grade keyboarding teacher thinks about my typing skills, but I did the best. Um, okay, so um, we're going to start with uh, something that's pretty easy. These words, this I support, um, we don't need to see those in your thesis statements. Um, the, and we don't need to see them anywhere in the essay. So I would be saying no personal pronouns. So we don't want anything in the first person. So I don't need to say I, I think, I believe. It's sort of like an, an underlying assumption that your essay is your opinion. So we can just sort of save that. We don't need that part. Um, Another thing that's important is that just like the idea that I'm trying to get you comfortable with using this, um, like this formula, later on as you learn the other parts of the essay, there are a lot of things I'm going to ask you to do that feel very stilted. They feel very, like I'm going to ask you to repeat the same line over and over and over again throughout your essay. And you're going to say, that sounds terrible, Mr. Rodriguez. It sounds like I'm repeating myself. I'm going to say, yes, and you're going to get all your points. Um, so we have to sort of remember that the college board, and therefore I, when I'm doing your essays, we view all of this as a first draft. So it's not about getting the phrasing exactly right. It's not about um, using like you know this you know, great use of synonyms so that you can say the same analysis without repeating yourself. It's not about any of that. Um, and so the nitty gritty of like I might want to rephrase uh, like if this was a final draft, the idea of the fact of the benefits that each side receives, like we might be able to make that a little bit more straightforward. But it doesn't matter because we know what we mean here, and that's what we're that's what we're after. The college board's after what is the argument here, not how pretty does it sound. Um, so that's another point. Sometimes students, because you guys are so used to being great writers, that you get bogged down in trying to rewrite and like self-edit as you're like in the process on test day or whatever. Um, but you don't have time for that. You have to just not get worried about the like how pretty it sounds or that's not the right phrasing or I didn't say that right. 
move on. If we can understand you, that's all we need. Okay. Um, so what is the argument here? What is the most significant effect of European exploration? She phrases it like this, the benefits each side of the world received. And then she clarifies a little bit later. So can we boil it down to what is sort of the central argument she's trying to make? Yeah, I think her real argument is the Colombian exchange. Um, and I think really her underlying argument is pretty similar to one that I made because she's talking about not the death, right, not the disease, but that the trade uh, that comes, so the goods that are going back and forth. So we might be able to then say, um, we might be able to get rid of this, not because it's bad, but because it's repetitive. We can get down to what her real argument was, which is the Colombian exchange. Um, and then we just need to add a little bit, and here's another place I'm going to encourage you to do something you're going to think is weird, which is use the words of the prompt where it's appropriate. Just like I asked you that for the short answer question, here, when we use the words of the prompt, we are more likely to make sure we answer that question. So here I'm going to just add those phrases. The most significant effect of European exploration was to trade, such as the Colombian exchange. And then she used the word thus, which I'm going to just change to because, both aided each other to evolve. Now that's a pretty solid thesis, right? So all the ideas were already there. It was a matter of figuring out what was that argument that we wanted to make? What was Kiana really saying? And in this case, she was saying that the real benefit was, the, or that the real biggest impact was this Colombian exchange and how that allows for trade. And she already had her because statement. She knew where she was going. She had the explanation. We just sort of fit angled the middle. This is where pre-writing your thesis, writing it down one time before you get into the actual writing of your essay is key. Because you can get it all on paper, you figure out what your ideas are, and then it's not hard to just move a phrase here or add in a little bit here. That was really good. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, let's try another, uh, Caroline. Okay. My argument is that the European population uh, the exchange of food and the biggest impact because it dramatically changed European and American lifestyles. All right. Uh, so one of the things here, um, this is not a bad thing, uh, but it's a question of um, just we want to be efficient. We want to save our time. This idea of some might argue. Um, so we might just say uh, something like, although the dramatic decrease of the Native American population um, was, whatever, significant. Uh, and then that way we can just get rid of that, like some might argue. It's not necessary. Again, it's kind of implied. We're just giving the, the, the point of the complexity is to give, to make, the people, make sure people understand that we know that there's an alternative viewpoint. Um, okay, so we've got the exchange of foods and animals had the biggest impact because it dramatically changed European and Native American lifestyles. And we've talked about some of these issues before, right? So um, if I were going to be nitpicky, Carolyn would be great to go ahead and she can make her argument, the exchange of foods and animals, just like Kiana said, the Colombian exchange is the real, um, the real factor she wants to talk about. But if I'm being nitpicky, having that word and, right, that conjunction in the middle of my argument, is just a red flag that maybe Carolyn's going to fall victim to having one paragraph on how food was really important and one paragraph about animals are really important, and I'm not going to feel like there's one co cohesive argument being made. And can I just pause and say that I would rather you make three small arguments and have an essay than just sit there and stress over your thesis for 20 minutes and not write anything at all? Is that, like, do you understand that? So when we're practicing like this, um, we, I'm often going to say, well, how can we make it a little bit better? Or could we think a little bit more and come up with one central argument instead of three? And that's good because when we're practicing, we have time for that. But I don't ever want that to paralyze you in the moment when you're writing. Whenever you've got the best you've got, this is all I can think of. I can't think of a way to, to put those together. This one's easy to think of how to put it together. You use Columbian exchange or commodity exchange or whatever you want to say. But it's not always going to be that obvious. And if you can't think of a way to get rid of that conjunction, just keep going. Because again, it is better to have two paragraphs that are about two slightly different things than no paragraphs at all. So that's so no big deal. Um, dramatically changed European and Native American lifestyles. When we get into the writing portion, 
we're going to want to refine this piece because it's hard to argue. What does that mean, change their lifestyle? Um, maybe it means created cultural change. Maybe it means change their economic systems or, or political structures or whatever it is. But we're not quite that far yet. So at this point, that's still, if we can talk about how it changed lifestyles, that's going to support our claim that this exchange of food uh, and animals had a big impact. Uh, can I get somebody to volunteer? Did somebody choose something else? We've had three examples now, mine plus two more, basically about the Columbian Exchange. Did anybody choose disease or maybe population growth or something? Okay, go ahead. Uh, well, let me get Colton. Um, so, although the Columbian Exchange was a significant, significant effect of European exploration, the most significant effect Hold on. Okay, the most significant. Effect was the total exploration of the Columbian because of the disease forced labor and bloodshed that followed. Okay, um, so what are we noticing? What is the claim here? Yeah, the claim is the most important effect when a bunch of Native Americans died, right? Um, is my complexity good? Does the complexity off my by mine any cold? Is, is the complexity good? Does it offer like an alternative viewpoint, something else somebody might say was important? Mm -hmm. Yeah, does that that Columbian exchange element there? A, a couple of things here. So um, if our argument is basically that Native American death overall is a real problem, then all of this stuff after the word because isn't really an explanation. It's just more of the argument, right? Do you see, does it kind of nod your head if you're sort of seeing that? So this is just more of the argument. The argument is Native Americans, the toll exploration took on them, by which he means they died. Um, and so what we're seeing here, because of all this, it just means that, that these are the reasons they died. It doesn't tell me any, anything about why them dying was important. Okay? So this could go up here, but then we get into that list in our argument, right? We don't want to list in our argument. So I think we can just leave it. The toll exploration took on the Natives. Um, and that he can use this nice language here about disease, forced labor, and bloodshed. That might be his three paragraphs, but I don't need to know that to do this. So now let's think about what is the reason? Why would we want to argue that the high death rate for Native Americans might be considered the most important effect of European exploration? Okay, um, because it resulted in cultural destruction and, um, I don't know, allowed the Europeans to, um, I don't know, spread their culture unchecked or something. Any other ideas for why we might have argued that the um, great dying was um, the most significant effect? Okay, sure. So it led to, you know, like decreased cultural diversity in North America um, as we wipe out all these tribes. Uh, did you have an idea, Jackson? I thought I saw you. No problem. Uh, okay, so we can see here how the because part is different. It's not just more of my argument. It's why do I think that my argument is the best one? Why do I think this thing I identified is the best one? Does anybody have any questions about the structure of the pieces? We're going to practice again. All right. 